Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Elizabeth informed Charlotte that Valentin had spent the entire night by her side in her hospital room. Charlotte inquired as to Anna's visit. Elizabeth remained silent. Elizabeth assisted Charlotte in standing up and in learning to walk. Jake showed up near the elevator with a bunch of white roses. When Charlotte spotted Jake, she grinned and said that her favorite flower was a rose. Jake was invited by Elizabeth to go on a walk with her and Charlotte. How is Charlotte feeling? Jake inquired. Now that you're here, it's better, Charlotte said. Elizabeth departed after a little while to get Jake and Charlotte some alone time and to purchase a vase for the roses. Charlotte later revealed to Jake that Anna had deliberately shot her. Why would Anna shoot Charlotte? Jake questioned. I'm not sure. Perhaps the police will have an explanation, Charlotte said. Dont and Jordan had a private meeting with Anna at the Port Charles police station. After Anna revealed to Dante and Jordan that all she told them would remain confidential, she revealed that Charlotte had been pursuing her for several months. Jordan questioned Valentin's decision to keep the truth from Anna months before. Dante figured Valentin had to think that Charlotte had burned Anna's house down. There is one thing, though, that Charlotte most definitely did not do. Jordan remarked, she didn't shoot Anna at the Metro court pool. Jordan's words validated Anna's suspicion that Sonny had been the intended victim of the shooter. Anna adamantly said that she opposed Charlotte's prosecution. She wouldn't trust Valentin again, Anna continued. I must speak with Charlotte. I have to know why she was pursuing me. However, I sense that it won't be simple, Anna remarked. For the first time in months, Ned and Olivia woke up in bed together at the Quartermain Mansion. They made love and kissed. Ned later expressed his want to get back to ELQ, noting that it had been ignored for several months. As Olivia talked about her job at Metro Court, she unintentionally brought up Nina. Ned remembered hearing Martin tell Mina that no one would find out that Nina had urged Martin to report Drew and Carly's insider trading to the SEC, and he flashed back to that moment when he heard her name. Ned told Olivia about it and said he confronted Nina months before in the Metro court pool. Olivia referred to Nina as a lowlife for attempting to persuade Ned not to reveal the information that Nina had requested Martin to share with the SEC. Ned expressed his desire to be honest with Drew and Carly, but Olivia asked him to hold off. Olivia mentioned that Drew was out of jail and that she had never seen Sonny happier than he was with Nina. Olivia questioned Ned's ability to forget what he had recalled. Ned expressed his desire to clear his record. Do you not remember that I was accused by all of making that call to the SEC? Ned admitted, Hell, even my own mother thought I did it, although she actually applauded the move, and that he would postpone the reveal for the time being in order to protect Olivia. Blaze wanted to experiment with different musical styles, as Brooklyn informed Lois in the mansion's kitchen downstairs. Blaze ought to become more into country music, according to Yuri. A little while later, Ned, dressed in a business suit and with a clean shave, entered beside Olivia. You're not Eddie, Yuri pointed out right away. Yuri's insight struck Lois and Brooklyn, who requested Ned to corroborate it. I'm here. I'm back, a smiling Ned declared. Lois and Brooklyn gave Ned hugs. How had Ned retrieved his memories? Lois inquired. Ned thought back to Olivia pulling him out of the sea. The story impacted everybody. Wiley begged to see Nina after school, and Michael pulled a grumpy expression outside the Quartermain Estate Gatehouse. Willow saw that Wiley was playing t-ball, but Wiley wouldn't give up. Willow observed that Michael detested Wiley's desire to spend time with Nina after Wiley hurried upstairs to get something. Speaking angrily about Nina, Michael claimed that she had not changed. Willow expressed her belief that Nina had grown from her previous errors. Wiley went back down the steps. Together, Willow and Wiley departed. Carly and Nina had a cordial conversation about Charlotte's shooting at Kelly's diner. After Carly had disappeared into the kitchen, Martin came in, and as soon as he saw Nina, he turned to go. 
Martin led Nina outside. Give me one reason why I shouldn't have you disbarred for violating attorney-client privilege, Nina replied. When Nina pointed out that Martin had broken his word, he pretended that he hadn't been dodging her. In a weak attempt to defend himself, Martin called Michael a formidable enemy. Nina noticed that Michael was using blackmail to try and limit her ability to see her daughter and grandchildren. Nina was urged by Martin to call Michael's bluff and inform everyone that she had instructed Martin to alert the SEC of Carly and Drew's illicit actions. Carly and Drew don't worry me. My daughter and Sonny are on my mind. My household. This could be the tipping point. It would crush me if they never wanted to see me again, Nina said. Martin advised Nina not to make any more enemies, saying that she needed friends. Drew had stopped by to say hello, and Carly was outside as Martin left. Nina expressed her happiness that Drew was out of Pentonville sooner than anticipated. Carly looked back to head inside, but Nina implored her to hold on. Nina inquired as to Carly's interest in repurchasing her portion of Metro Court. When Willow showed up, she talked endlessly about Wiley and then mentioned that she had cut off someone. Carly informed Willow of Nina's proposal. Willow informed Nina that it was terrific news and suggested that she discuss it with Michael. Drew was in Michael's Aurora office, and Michael was thrilled to see him. Drew complimented Michael on the way he had managed Aurora. Drew stated that taking over ELQ would be his first task at Aurora. With a casual demeanor, Drew revealed his intention to use Ned's mental state in order to seize control of ELQ. Ned is free to carry on with his activities and play the guitar. However, we must find a means to reclaim ELQ, Drew exclaimed with joy. Michael pointed out that Drew had been imprisoned for insider trading the previous time ELQ and Aurora attempted to merge. This time, there's gonna be no insider trading because this time, the only two people that are better know about this are you and me, Drew boasted. Ned informed Olivia about the issue that ELQ had been entangled in for months at the same moment. Michael had made the decision to step in and help out at ELQ, Olivia mentioned. All the more reason to get back into the office. So I can run ELQ and Michael can turn his focus back on Aurora, Ned stated prior to departing. Chase found out at the hospital that Gregory had fallen the day before. Gregory stated that he was advised to start using a cane by his neurological physician. Gregory, Chase begged not to shut him out. Gregory acknowledged that he was holding onto denial and that he still didn't think he had ALS. Chase recounted that Gregory had always been his hero in an impassioned speech. Chase put his hand in Gregory's, and there was a tear in his eye. Dad, I've got you covered, remarked Chase. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.